Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you. May the Holy Spirit open the understanding of each of you so you may understand. You may all understand His Word perfectly well. So, we've been speaking and I would like you who are married or you who are preparing yourself to get married or you you want to get married you want you want to establish a family so pay close attention to what the word of God says and the idea of family of having a home of the building of a family Please, if by any chance the Holy Spirit will certainly give us the words that will meet your needs, so you may understand what it means to establish a family. This is extremely important. This is fundamental in the life of a human being. So much so that everybody wants to have a family, except those that poor them were thrown into this world without a mother or father, and they don't have the reference of a home, of a family, mother, father. But still, everyone would like to have a family, a home, because family is the main pillar, the main pillar of humanity. God is the one who established the family. He established a home. Remember what we said yesterday, that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. The Apostle Paul, used by the Holy Spirit, said that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit, is one spirit with him, isn't it? Which means that when you give yourself to Jesus, when you aferra yourself to Jesus, which means when you are bound to Jesus, you know that the word aferrar comes from Spanish, which its origin is iron or metal. To aferrar means to bind iron to iron. It's like welding, to join a piece of metal to another. But these metals can only be joined together with a very strong kind of, of glue. So there is a heating process where the two pieces of metals are joined to one another. And that's exactly how roads, bridges, flyovers are made possible. Anyway, that's what I wanted you to understand. When, in Spanish, they say aferrar, this means that it's being bound, glued with what the person is aferring itself to. So they are being glued to another person, for example, body, soul, and spirit, spirit with spirit, soul with soul, body with body. So this is aferrar and they both become one flesh, one flesh. This is the idea of marriage which started there in the Garden of Eden. God created man according to his image and likeness, and after mating him, he made the animals as well and said, it's not good that man should be alone. So he made the woman, Eve, which was comparable to him. However, with spirit, soul, and body, after the image and likeness of the Most High, Adam as well as Eve were made after God's own image. So, this couple that was perfect was exactly created so that they could 
Once being a family, once they were married, once they were together in matrimony, once they were glued to one another, aferrado to one another, then what would happen? There would be the birth of children, which was natural. That's what God intended for, for, for them. So that the couple, Adam and Eve, could bear children in the Garden of Eden, and then they would look after the garden. So, God was fulfilling himself, let's put it this way, in that couple. God, let's say, he felt joyful because he had made his masterpiece in nature. God's masterpiece was human beings, not the angels, archangels, cherubs, or anything like that. No. God made man and, and a woman according to his image and likeness to establish a family so that this family could develop on earth and then God could be in communion with them as it happened back then, before sin existed. God would walk in the cool of the day with Adam and Eve. This would happen. There was no sin, so there was no problem. There were no problems. So as long as there was no sin, both were perfect. They were living after God's own will. They didn't know sin or evil. So Adam and Eve were a perfect couple. This couple, pay attention. Close attention. Man, Adam, represented God. He typified God. And Eve typified the church of the Lord Jesus. Let's say the kingdom of God on earth. Directed, conducted by the head, who is God, symbolized by Adam. So you see that man is more rational and a woman is more emotional. So you can see that one completes the other. We need to be rational, but we also need to be emotional as well. Because the feelings that God put in us, which is our soul, make us have the feeling of how God feels in regards to ourselves. We feel, let's put it this way, what God feels in regards to everything that happens on earth. Because man was created after the image and likeness of God. I repeat, Adam and Eve. And they both, once living in holiness and, and sanctifying themselves, there was no sin. So they would bear perfect children. So there would be no diseases, infirmities, separation, lies, deceit, corruption. There would be... Evil wouldn't exist. Evil wouldn't have right or, or, or room if there was no sin from Adam and Eve. Have you imagined, you who are watching me now, how many women that once were so beautiful, wonderful, celebrities, and today they are dried like a, an old dried prune, so they have to go and get plastic surgery. Yeah, if there was no sin, there would be no need for plastic surgery. People would reach a certain age, look a certain way, and live that way, would have that appearance for all eternity. And God, being fulfilled or fulfilling himself in that couple that was bearing children, so we would have here on earth the kingdom of God. Perfect. The kingdom of God, physically speaking, physically speaking, but with sin and disobedience to the word of God, then Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden. 
they sinned where? In the garden. And the sin they committed was not the sexual intercourse they had. No, sexual intercourse would have to happen naturally. It wasn't sinful. As it's not sinful when there is marriage, when the family is established, that is matrimony, it's not sin, no way. So they would grow and multiply themselves there in the Garden of Eden. But before that happened, they sinned. And with sin, God could no longer they broke that relationship they had with God. Why? Because God is perfection and righteousness. How can righteousness walk or marry true unrighteousness? It's not possible. How can light be joined to darkness? It's not possible. So God cast them out of the garden and then Humanity was born in corruption, was already born distorted, and then death came into existence. Evil existed, death existed. The first death there was, after the sin of Adam and Eve, was the animal. God had to sacrifice it. Then offering came into existence. The tithe came into existence. That's it. Whilst there was no sin, then there was no offering, no tithe, there was no stealing, there was nothing evil. But when sin came into existence because Adam and Eve fell into it, then God had to kill, God had to sacrifice an animal to cover their nakedness. Which means that... Due to sin, then the offerings of sacrifices started. The first sacrifice that typified the sacrifice of Jesus was that animal that was pure and perfect, that was killed because of the sin of Adam and Eve. God took its skin to make clothes, coverings for Adam and Eve, to cover their nakedness and, and sin. Let's put it this way. Not that nakedness is, is a sin, but the spirit of sin had been instilled in them. You can see, for example, dear friends, that the animals don't need clothes. Isn't it nice? The animals live peacefully for them. Sin doesn't exist because they simply they are simply animals. They don't reason. They are so and emotional, but they are not rational. They don't need that because there is no wickedness in them, which is not the case with men. When God looked for Adam and Eve, you can read the text there in Genesis, that God was looking for them and called out for them, and they were hiding. Why are they hiding? Because they were in sin. So when the person lives in sin, they hide, they try to hide because they know they've done something wrong. Anyway, let's go back to the family subject. So God, as the, the text says, established matrimony saying like this, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, meaning he would be aferrado to his wife, and they shall become one flesh, one body. So, I would like you to know, for my personal experience here, Esther and I, when Esther suffers for any reason, then I suffer. When I suffer for any reason, she also suffers. Do you know why? Because we are one flesh. So, if I hurt Esther, if I hurt her with my words, it is as though I was getting a knife and, and stabbing myself, and vice versa. So, dear friends, when there is unity, when there is this aferrar to another person, this is a hundred percent, it's a total surrender and indefinite. There is no 
separation or divorce. Actually, God says that He hates divorce. He didn't establish divorce. So, divorce came due to the corruption of mankind. But God, this is another subject as well that we can speak about another time. But when both are united, are joined, they become one flesh. We spoke about iron, isn't it? So, when iron is joined to iron, then they become one, you know, when they, they build huge buildings and houses and so on. So, that's how marriage is. So, when Paul says there that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him, this is an analogy of what happens between a man and a woman. When they get married, they become one flesh, one body. So, there is established the principle of a family, of a home. The children will be born with the reference of having a mother, a father. Children will want to have a family just like their mother and father do. And this is so important, but so important that there is a commandment, the fifth commandment. We had a campaign not too long ago about that, of the fifth commandment, which says that children should honor father and mother so that they could have their days prolonged on earth. So, this principle of family is what the Bible teaches us. The family is the holiest institution on earth, even holier than the church itself, the physical church. So, if there is no family, then what's the point of the church? That's the reality. If there is no offering, then there is no altar, there is no need for altar. The offering was established for the very reason of covering the sin of the sinners. And this is done where? In the church, the church represents the altar, the temple. And when the person gives themselves to Jesus, they affair themselves to Jesus, they become God's temple, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. This is very nice, isn't it? Can you understand it? If you can't understand it, then ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand it. Pray. Say, God, help me. Teach me. I want to learn because I want to have a family. I want to have a home. By the way, today, as it's Thursday, and it happens every Thursday, we work, we try to give to the people what God has given us, which is a family. Tomorrow we speak more about this. But did you understand what family is? The same thing it is when Paul says that he who is joined, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. It's one with God. So this, for example, I was joined to the Lord myself, and the Holy Spirit came and glued us together. So, there is a marriage, a covenant between God and I. He is the head and I am the body. He is the Lord and I am the servant. So, there is established what? The kingdom of God on earth. So, I live in the kingdom of heaven. I have to have a behavior according to the Holy Scriptures according to the laws of the kingdom of God, where God reigns, He speaks and His servants listen and obey. That's why Jesus said that the kingdom of God will be inside of us. We will speak more about this tomorrow. But today, as it is Thursday, we will be teaching that here in the Temple of Solomon. Renato and Cristiani will be 
holding this special seminar for couples or for singles that want to learn how to establish a family. In all the universal churches as well, the pastors will be today available to teach and advise passing to those who are interested in building a family above all with God. A family starts with God in their relationship, in your relationship with God. Once you are aferrado to Him, He will be aferrado to you and you and Him will be one spirit only. Okay? God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Praise God.